Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at the master budget. The master budget is an important topic whether you are taking managerial accounting, cost accounting, CMA exam or the CPA exam, the BEC section. You need to know the various components such as the sales, the sales budget, the production budget, direct material, labor, overhead, cost of goods, sold, selling, and administrative, which are all called the operating budget. You need to know about the capital expenditure budget, the cash budget, the budgeted net income, and the budgeted balance sheet. So whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate, I strongly suggest you will take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. Especially if you are a CPA candidate or a CMA candidate, I don't replace your review course. You keep those. What I can do is provide you alternative explanation, which might help you understand the material a little bit differently, which in turn will help you understand your review course better. You can take advantage of your review course, which in turn help you to pass your CPA or CMA exam. Your risk is one month of subscription. Give it a try. You are investing for your career, for the long term. Spend that month. See whether it's going to help you or not. If it helps you, you keep it You keep it for future month. If not, you will cancel. But the potential gain of that risk is passing your certification, passing your exam. And if not for anything, take a look at my website to find out how well your university or not well doing on the CPA exam. I do have resources for other courses. So please check them out. Connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so and review what other people say about using my material to pass the CPA exam. Please like this recording, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So let's take a look, go through an overview. And for this session, I'm going to warn you, there's going to be a lot of numbers that that's going to be thrown around. So if you don't have access to the material, to the numbers, what I suggest you do for example, take a picture on your phone, take a picture of the budget numbers that I am working with. This way you could refer to them or write the numbers down because I'm going to be referring to numbers from other screens. So that's it will be easier for you rather than pausing and going back, which is you could you could do that as well. But if it's easier for you, if you have this information somehow in front of you. So let's go real quick. We, we, we covered this. An operating budget is... This is the operating budget, which we're going to prepare one. Sales, cost of sales, uh, selling and administrative. That's going to feed into the cash budget. The capital expenditure represent how much we are going to buy in purchase and property, plant and equipment. The financial budget include the cash budget, which is everything feeds into the cash budget. Then the cash budget feeds into the income statement and the balance sheet. And we have... Obviously, we have to prepare the ending cash, which will feed, as I said, in the balance sheet. So the best way to illustrate this concept is to work an example. And as I said, the example will be comprehensive, will have a lot of numbers, starting with the completed balance sheet. So what we are saying is this. We have a balance sheet as of March 31st, 2026, and now we're going to complete a balance sheet for the next three months, which is a budgeted balance sheet. But to come up with the budgeted balance sheet, we're going to have to complete many schedules, which what we're going to be learning to do. But you have to understand that we are starting with this much cash, 16400 this much account receivable, this much inventory, this much prepaid. So all these numbers, sorry, I have to write them. I have to spell them out because I do have some blind viewers, so I do apologize. Cash is 16400 account receivable 16000 merchandise inventory 48000 prepaid 1800 I do apologize if I don't you know, mention all the numbers, uh, but that's the reason I mentioned them. Although you see them on your screen, but some of your classmates, again, I have two or three uh, blind individuals over the years. They, they get, you know, they ask me to, 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 to please say the numbers. So that's why I say them. Equipment and expenditure, which is property, plant, and equipment, thirty-two thousand. Less accumulated depreciation of twelve thousand eight hundred. We have accounts payable of sixteen thousand eight hundred. Salaries and commission payable of four thousand two hundred and fifty. This is common stock of twenty thousand, and the beginning retained earning is sixty thousand three hundred and fifty. So those are the figures that that's given to us at the beginning of the period. Now, when we start a budget. You have to understand there's, there's an order, what we do. And what drives a company is sales, is their revenue. So guess what? Sales, it's going to drive everything else. So we're going to start with sales. Now, how do we estimate sales? So how do company estimate sales? There are many ways that they can estimate sales. They can ask their salespeople to make a projection. They can study the market. They can hire a consultant. It doesn't matter. We, we're not concerned with that here. 
the numbers will be given to us, but the sales budget will drive everything. So the forecast for the sales revenue is the cornerstone of the master budget, and we're dealing with this company, Greg's Games. Their sales in March were $40,000. And by the way, March is already was factored, okay? But we need this number to project other numbers. So the sales in March was 40,000. The sales manager project the following monthly sales. Here we go. April 50,000, May 80,000, June 60,000, July 50,000, and August 40,000. Those are projected sales, okay? So the sales budget is prepared based on 60% of our sales is cash and 40% on account. So simply put, when we make a sale for a particular month, the customers usually pay 60% in cash and the remaining is 40% on account, which will which we collect the following month. Heaven said so, it means this 40,000 here in March that we did in March, 60% of it was collected in March. What does that mean? It means 40% of it was outstanding as of March, which is it's part of their account receivable. And I believe if my math is right, it's 16,000. And you can see here that 16,000 is on the balance sheet of the account receivable. So this is how the 16,000 came from. It's based on 40K sales in March, which is we receive 60 and the remaining is 40. And here's what we have to do now. Basically, we're gonna look at these figures and we're gonna say April and we're preparing a four month ended July 31st, 2026. So we're preparing the budget for four months. So August is not included, but we'll need August. We need the projected month of August. You're gonna see why we have why we need this number. So in April, 50,000 in total, 60% cash, 20% sales on account. We'll do the same thing for May, which is 80,000 in total. 60% of 80,000 is cash and 40% is sales on account. June, the same thing, 60,000 in total. In July, the same thing, 50,000 50, in total, 60% in cash, 20,000 on account. Now, then we total all the cash and we total all the cash is 144,000. This is the cash sales. Simply put, we're gonna be preparing a cash receipt schedule and we're going to need this figure in sales on account it's going to be in total ninety six thousand. this is this is the total but we're going to have to compute the account receivable at the end of the period now what is the account receivable remember the last month part of it will be this this july july 60 percent of july will be cash and 40 percent of july will be on account what does that mean it means we're going to act end up with an account receivable i just i just want to show you this now because you're going to see where this number coming from 40 percent of fifty thousand is twenty thousand so you already find out what our account receivable we projected what our account receivable it's going to be twenty thousand okay this is the sales budget again you're going to see this several times several times because we need these these figures later on because we need total sales for the period 240,000 this is going to feed into the income statement this is going to feed into cash and the account receivable it's going to be needed on the balance sheet so that's why you're going to see this this schedule again and again now once we after we compute the sales budget we have to compute what is our cost of sales and that's going to include inventory and purchases to figure out your cost of goods sold here we are not manufacturing anything if we were manufacturing, simply put, if we were manufacturing items, uh, simply put, we have to prepare a direct material budget, a direct labor budget, and manufacturing overhead budget. Now, I do have an example for preparing those type of budgets on my website, farhatlectures.com, but in this example, I'm going to be considering we are selling finished products, so we're not manufacturing anything. Okay, so remember, the cost of goods sold computation, we have to know this relationship, beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory gives us cost of goods sold. You have to know this formula by heart, okay? Beginning inventory, what you started with, plus what you purchased. And by the way, we call those two, we call those two available for sale. We call those two goods available for sale, goods available for sale. And from those goods, we will deduct what we have left 
and this is how we compute our ending inventory. Now, if we want to find out what is our purchases, all we have to do is rearrange this formula, and we know that purchases, to find out purchases, will take cost of goods sold plus the desired ending inventory minus beginning inventory. All what we did is, hopefully, you know, we just rearranged the formula. We kept purchases on this side, and we moved ending inventory, which became a plus ending inventory, minus beginning inventory. Just what we did is just rearrange the formula, move those two, to the to the other side of the equation now let's take a look at additional information um, budgeted cost of goods sold average 70 percent of sales the company will know this will know that for every dollar in sales approximately 70 percent is cost of goods sold that's that that, that the, the company will have this data and if it's a new company they will have to basically um, come up with this figure minimum ending inventory so they, they have to have ending inventory for every month should equal to 20,000 plus 80% of next month cost of goods sold. It seems they want to have inventory on hand. And that's the number that they want, 20,000 plus minimum of 20,000 plus they want to have 20, 80% ready for next month cost of goods sold. What does that mean? Let's take a look at what, how do we interpret these numbers. It means for the month of April, now we are looking for the month of April, sales, let me just get the... Uh, sales budget if we look at the sales budget sales for april is fifty thousand. remember 70 percent of this is cost of goods sold so 70 percent of fifty thousand is thirty five thousand, which is cost of goods sold in addition to that so this is cost of goods sold now we have to compute the ending inventory the ending inventory remember it's twenty thousand plus eighty percent of the cost of goods sold for next month so how do we compute next month well next month is 80 80 000. we're going to have to compute 80 000 times 80 percent and simply put 80 000. so april it's going to be 20 000 plus 80 000 sorry 80 000 of the cost of goods sold so first we have to take 80 000 80 000 times 70 percent and that's going to give us cost of goods sold 56 000 then multiply this 56 000 by 80 percent which will give us which will give us this this figure only should be forty four thousand eight hundred then we add the twenty thousand minimum that we want to we'll come up with sixty four thousand eight hundred this is how we came up with ending inventory so cost of goods sold plus ending inventory minus beginning inventory which is the beginning inventory is given to you on the balance sheet forty eight thousand will give us the budgeted purchases so this is how much we have to purchase for the month of april now for the purchases we have to find out how much do we have to pay in cash and how much are we going to pay on account so we have to find out how much is cash and how much is on account but this is the total purchases may the same thing what we do for the month of may let me erase this the month of May 1st will take May sales times 70%. So May sales time, which is 80,000 times 70%, will give us cost of goods sold. Then we have to compute our purchases for that month. Well, to compute our purchases, we have to we have to find out what what is our desired ending inventory. And the desired ending inventory is computed as 20,000 plus 80% of next month cost of goods sold what's next month cost of goods sold we have to look at sales sales is sixty thousand we're going to take sales multiplied by seventy percent i believe that's forty two thousand and it's eighty percent of the cost of goods sold so forty two thousand times eighty percent plus twenty thousand that must be twenty three thousand is that correct thirty three thirty three thousand six hundred because if we take thirty three thousand six hundred plus 20,000 will give us 53,000 which is which is the desired ending inventory then we'll have total merchandise inventory required less the beginning what is how do we come up with, how do we come up with the with the beginning the beginning is last month ending 64,800 then we find out this is what should be our budgeted purchases for the month of may then we repeat this process for june we repeat this process for july now the only thing you want to be aware of this is what throw students off when you are computing the total when you are computing the total for the period well you, you add up all of your cost of goods sold your ending inventory uh, desired ending inventory for july will be your desired ending inventory for the period 
Okay, now your beginning inventory, when you're computing your beginning inventory, your beginning inventory will be the beginning inventory of the period. So notice here, 48,000 48, was the beginning inventory of the period. So at the end of the period, when you are doing the computation for the whole period, you will use the beginning inventory of the period. So please make sure you are aware of this. So two figures throw students off. The ending inventory will be the last month ending inventory. And the beginning inventory is will be the beginning inventory of the period. And now we have all these purchases. You know, now we need how we find out how much we have to purchase for each month. Simply put, when we look at the cash payment budget, here's our what our purchases would look like. We pay 50% this month and we pay 50% the next month. So it's going to be 50% cash, 50% on account, because I kept saying, but this is going to be the rate. So this is the, and we're going to see this uh, inventory purchases and cost of goods sold budget several times. Okay. The next thing we're going to complete is selling administrative, uh, selling an administrative expense budget. Okay. The next budget is to estimate the selling and administrative expenses needed to meet the projected sales, because you're going to have to incur expenditure to operate your business. Well, the monthly payroll for Greg, uh, Greg's game salaries is 2,500 plus sales commission. So it's part of a fixed cost, 5,000, uh, 2,500 plus 15% of sales. This is basically a mixed cost with both a fixed and a variable component. And hopefully you all know what a mixed cost is. Other monthly expenses will be as follow. They have a fixed cost of rent, 2,000, they have a depreciation expense per month equal to 500 insurance expense also a fixed cost of 200 and they have miscellaneous expense which is a variable of five percent of sales so notice they have two variable sales commission and miscellaneous expense now we are ready to prepare the selling and administrative budget simply put we're going to take it month by month and once you know one month you know the rest um, let's look at the sales budget first. The sales budget for the month of April is 50,000. Therefore, the sales commission is 50,000 times 15% will give us 7,500. Then we have a miscellaneous expense of 5% of sales. 50,000 times 5% will give us 2,500. So those are the variable expenses as far as the selling and administrative budget. Then we list the fixed expenses. We have salaries of 2,500, rent expense of 2,000, depreciation expense of 500, and insurance expense of 200. And notice those. Those are fixed for the next four months, April, May, June, July. Notice they have the same number. Now, for the variable expenses, they're going to vary from month to month. For example, the commission for May will be different, will be 12,000 based on 80,000 80, sales. And miscellaneous expense will be 5% of 80,000. And for June and July, sales for June was 60,000. Sales for July was 50,000. Okay, then we add up the total for the variable expenses and the miscellaneous expenses, which is 36,000 for the commission expense and 12,000 for the miscellaneous. The salaries expense in total for the period 10,000, rent expense is 8,000, depreciation 2,000, and insurance expense 2,000. Now all these figures, they're gonna feed, well, not all of, yeah, feed, they're all gonna feed into the income statement and the depreciation would also feed into the accumulated depreciation expense on the balance sheet. But this is the selling and administrative, but I just wanna show you that we're gonna see these figures at the end when everything fits in the financial statement, the income statement and the balance sheet. Now let's take a look at our cash receipts. Now everything will feed into the cash receipts and cash payment, the cash budget. Starting at our cash receipts from customers, okay? April's budget, when we do, each month, it's going to be, for when we do April, it's going to be the cash collection consists of April cash sales, remember, 60% of that month, plus it's going to be the collection from March sales, which is 40% of the prior month, okay? And the process is repeated for all four months. For April, 60% of sales is 30,000. In the prior month, you remember we had 16,000 as an account receivable on the balance sheet. Well, we're going to receive it in April. So the total cash receipts is 46,000, which we are going to see this number again in the cash receipts and cash payment budget. For May, we'll do the same thing. 60% of the current sales, of cash sales, plus the 20,000 that we did not collect from the prior month because the prior month was 50,000. 30,000 was collected in April and 20,000, which is 60% was collected in April, which is 30,000 and 40,000, 40% 40 was collected in May, 
which is 20,000. So total is 50,000. So this is why this 30,000 in April plus 20,000 in May is the total April sales. Same thing with May. 48,000 in May, some of it will be in May, and 32,000 will be collected in July, so on and so forth. The total cash receipts will be 144,000. The total the credit sales receipts after one month, which is after the 40%, is 92,000. Total cash receipts for the four month is 236,000. Again, we're going to see this number again. Those are our cash receipts. This is the good stuff. Okay, now we're going to look at our cash payment. The cash payment consists of 50% of the March purchases and 50% will be paid in May. So every time we make a purchase, we pay immediately 50% in cash and we'll have an account receivable for the following month. So simply put, if we look at our budgeted cash payment, um, we're going to pay 50%. We're going to pay 50% from March last month purchases 50% from March, whatever we purchase in March, and 50% will be fra for April, whatever our total purchases was from the cost of goods sold uh, inventory. Then the same thing will happen in May. You know, we're going to have, well, let's take a look at, maybe we need to take a look at this. So let me go back here. So simply put, if you remember here, we said 51,800 was the number in April, 50-50. 50% will be collected in April and 50% will be collected in, I'm sorry, not collected, paid in April and 50% will be collected in May. Okay, that's what it makes it, what, that's what makes this number, that's what makes this number 25,900 plus 25,900. Now, where did this 16,800 16, came from? This, if you look at the balance sheet, you should have an accounts payable of this amount, which is you're going to pay in April. You had it as of March 31st, you paid in April. Same thing will happen in May, 22,000, and the, the other 22,000 will be paid in June. Same thing in July. Um, same thing for June, 18,000 will be paid in June, and 18,200 will be paid in July. So the total cash payment for everything this month and the AP from the prior month, the total cash payment for purchases is 164500 Again, we're going to see this in the cash, uh, cash receipts and cash payment schedule, which is the cash schedule. Schedule of cash payment for selling and administrative, and this is what it looks like. Variable expenses, they're telling us we pay 50000 this month and we pay 50000 of the commission expense this month and obviously the 50000 in the following month. Same thing with um, with the variable expenses. 50 per, I'm sorry, 50% 50 of last month commission, then 50% of this month commission. So we pay 50, 50. Miscellaneous expense, it seems we pay the whole thing all at once in the month incurred. But variable expenses for the commission, we pay them 50 immediately and we pay them 50 the following month. Fixed expenses, same thing. We're going to pay 50 this month. So we have salaries expense of 2,500. We'll pay April 1,250. We'll pay May 1,250. Uh, okay, no, I'm sorry. 1,250 and 1,250. Uh, rent expense will be paid. The, the full will be paid during the month. And by the way, here, it should be yes yeah rent uh, rent expense is 2000 total fixed payment 4500 total variable 9250 the total payment for selling and administrative again this is going to go into the cash budget is 13750 and we'll do the same thing for each month same thing for each month okay and by the way the 50% of july in commission to be paid in august is 5000 so we're going to have an accrual of 5000 you because 50% uh, of the sales commission, it's going to be 10,000. So we're going to pay 5,000 and we're going to accrue 5,000 remaining. This is the cash budget. Okay. First of all, we have beginning cash, April. This is coming from the balance sheet. Then we have cash receipts from the cash receipt schedule, 46,000 for the month of April. We, we already did this. This is from this figure here. So total cash receipt for April, we have cash available 62,400. And also for April, we're going to have a capital expenditure. So we're going to buy a new asset. This is a new information. We're going to pay for it cash. So that's negative 3,000. Purchase of merchandise inventory 42,700. This is coming from the cash payment for purchases total 42,000. 42,700 selling and administrative 13,750 we saw this on the previous slide so total cash payment 
is 59,450. The ending cash balance is 2,950. Well, the company wants to have at least 10,000, at least 10,000, okay? What they have to do, if they are short, they're gonna borrow to maintain this minimum fund balance, and they're gonna borrow in the increment of 1,000, they're going to pay 12% rate and when they pay when they have extra cash they're going to make installment payment of a thousand so so the minimum cash desired should be ten thousand okay so we are short we have a deficiency of seven thousand fifty okay so we're going to borrow an increment of a thousand we cannot borrow seven thousand will be less than ten thousand therefore we borrow eight thousand so we're going to borrow eight thousand 8,000 plus the excess cash of 2,950, it's going to keep us with cash 10,950. So this is the cash for April. Now this 10,550 of April will be will be the beginning cash for May. Then in May, we collected 68,000 from the cash receipt. Total cash available, 78,950. No capital expenditure, zero. Purchase of merchandise inventory, 48,300 coming from the cash payment. Then selling and administrative expenses coming from the prior slide. Now we have interest expense of $80. Now, where did the $80 coming from? We have $80,000, i am sorry, $8,000 in borrowing times 0.12, time, uh, 0.12 is the 12%, times 1 divided by 12, and this should give us, this should give us $80. So we have interest expense of $80. Total cash payment, 68 66,630. Our ending cash is 12,320. We're good. We have excess cash because the minimum is 10,000. We have excess cash of 2,320. We pay per month if we have any debt, 1,000. So we're going to pay 1,000. As, as a result, we're going to end up with 11,320 in cash. Again, this cash amount will be the beginning of June. And the process repeats itself. Now we add the cash receipts, then we deduct the cash payment computing the interest then we have 10650 uh projected cash we're going to make $1000 we're going to make $1000 payment uh projected because we have ending cash balance 20650 we have excess of 10650 so we're going to make a $1000 payment and our ending cash will be 19650 and the process repeats itself until we get to the ending balance of cash of 24440 and this number will go on this is going to be our ending balance balance sheet account for cash 24440 so for July we'll follow the same process you could review the figures now now we are ready actually to complete the projected income statement. The projected income statement, it's going to show sales. And where do sales coming from? Well, total sales, total budgeted sales, 240,000 sales. Cost of goods sold, 168 from the inventory purchases and cost of goods sold. That's going to give us a gross profit of 72,000. Then we have selling and admi administrative commission, miscellaneous salaries, rent, and depreciation and insurance. That's going to be uh, that's going to coming from the selling and administrative schedule total of 68,800. So if we take gross profit minus total selling and administrative. So this 68,800, let me go back and show you where it's coming from. It's coming from the selling and administrative budget. 68,000, 68,800. So then we have interest expense of 210 interest expenses coming from the cash budget because we incurred interest expense you remember we were short the first month and we had to accrue in, we had to pay interest so total interest for the four month was 210 dollars now this is the income statement so we are done with the budgeted income statement now we need to prepare the budgeted balance sheet starting with cash i told you the ending cash is 24440 and i'm sure you remember account receivable was 20000 you remember the last month, uh, the last month sales, the last month sales and 20, 40% uh, of it will be on account, will be collected in August. And that's the 20,000, the merchandise inventory. Also, we figure out the merchandise inventory balance, 42,400 prepaid was 1,800 and we're going to deduct 800 out of it, which will give us a, t a, a balance of 1,000 just to. Uh, just to know where this number coming from the 800 this is prepaid insurance 
and we incur 800 of insurance, 200 per month. So you can go back to the uh, selling and administrative uh, 200, not 800, 200 per month, 200 times four, four equal to 800. And this is how much we incur in prepaid insurance, how much we consumed. That's why it went down to a thousand. This is our current assets. Property, plant and equipment, we started with 32. We are giving that we purchased an additional 3,000. Accumulated depreciation, the beginning balance was 12,800 and 500 per month. That's adding 2,000, 14,800. We have total asset of 108, $108,040. Accounts payable is 50% of the last month budget. Actually, it's coming from the cash, uh, pay, uh, ca cash payment. Sales and commission, again, 50% of them will be paid the following month, which is 5,000. And we still have a loan of 5,000. This is coming from the cash budget. A loan of 5,000. This is our total liabilities. We have no long-term liabilities. We did not issue any common stock. The beginning retained earning was 60,350. We, we are projecting a profit of 2,990. Therefore, ending retained earning is 63,340. Total stockholders equity 83,340 plus liabilities of 24,700 will equal to total assets of 108, $108,040, which is total assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So this is basically the budgeted balance sheet. At the end of this recording, I would like to remind you that if you're interested in uh, working ec extra exercises or working practices, you can go to farhatlectures.com. I do have this chat. I do have this lesson in my managerial accounting course. Again, if your if your co if your school or if your textbook is teaching you about direct labor, direct material, how to find the budget for that, I do have those examples on my website. You can take a look at them. At the end of the day, I'm going to ask you to study hard, stay safe, invest in your career, invest in yourself. You are making a huge investment in your life. It will pay off later. 